All right, this is Honors Algebra 2 Precalculus. We're doing 6.6 .6 in Algebra 2, which is the natural base E. So a quick note, we did technically skip 6.5, which is the same sort of section as what we're about to do right now, but with the common base 10. All of the information that we're going to learn in 6.6 .6 is the same set of concepts that you would have seen in 6.5. Uh, the only difference is that in 6.5, uh, your book is talking about the log base 10 instead of the log base E. So don't panic about it. Uh, you're welcome to go back and revisit it if you want. We don't need it as much for this class, which is why we're moving past it. But uh, it's not, uh, the topic is not inaccessible after watching this video. So what is E? So E is Euler's number. We pronounce Euler as Euler, the way I just said it, not Euler. Please don't say Euler. Uh, e is an irrational number, like pi or the square root of 2, uh, and it's called the natural base. So E, right, is one of the super duper most important numbers in math. You can see that I have a screenshot here of uh, the first several di digits, but most of us uh, know that it's approximately 2.718, give or take. Uh, so it's a little bit smaller than 3, just like pi is a little bit bigger than 3, okay? So... Let's talk about where this number comes from. You're not going to have to calculate any digits of Euler's number. I just want to kind of walk you through the two primary ways that we can find this number uh, because this number will come up a lot, but for your purposes, it's just E. And you can see that there's an E button in your calculator. Uh, see this LN? That's the natural log, right? Uh, e to the X is directly above that. There's also that lowercase E right here above the division symbol. If you hit second and division, you'll get lowercase E, which is Euler's number. Just like directly above the caret, you'll see pi, right? There's a pi button as well. Okay, so there are several ways to calculate an approximate value for E, but since E is irrational, like pi, you can't write all of the digits ever. Like, it's just not possible. You could try to do it, try to do it, and you'd spend your whole life, and on your deathbed, you would still be calculating, and it wouldn't happen because there are infinite digits, and you just can't do it. So here are two of the ways to find E. Uh, again, you will not be asked to find E. E has a button on your calculator, and it's actually better to leave it as E in an answer. If the answer to something is 4E, you should leave it as 4E. You should not approximate the answer. You should give me the actual answer, which is 4E. Uh, but regardless, we're going to walk through how to do this. So in both of these cases, the bigger the N value is, the closer the approximation gets to the actual value of E. So if you look at the expression 1 plus 1 over N raised to the nth power, if you plug that in at N is 1, you get 1 plus 1 all to the first, which is 2. If you plug it in for n is 2, you get 1 plus a half to the second, which is 2.25. If you plug in, let's say, n is 5, you get 1 plus a fifth raised to the fifth power, uh, and you get 2.48832, okay? If you plug in 10, now we can start getting to the point where we have so many digits that it's going to keep going. If I plug in 10, I get 1 plus 1 tenth all to the tenth power, and using my calculator, I get that this is 2.5937, dot, 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 dot. And I can keep doing that. As, as the n get very large, the larger the n get, the closer this value gets to being e. So you can see that when I get all the way down to plugging in 10,000, that to the first, and actually before 10,000, to the first four places, when I plug, I'm sorry, that's 100,000. For the, When I get to 10,000, for the first four places, uh, it does match e, but then it's not exactly right. So these are all approximations for e. Again, you can't actually find the number e. Uh, you can't find all the digits because there's no end to the digits. It is an irrational number. Those digits go on forever and do not repeat. So that's one way to approximate e, right? Is the, is the limit... Uh, like how, well, you don't know limits yet, it's, uh, it's, it's essentially what this value approaches as you plug in very big numbers for n, okay? The other way to find e um, is, in, and, and this actually wouldn't be approximate if this has the dot 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 at the end. If you follow this pattern forever, it would be actually the value of e. But one way to approximate e uh, is to do 1 divided by 1 factorial, and I'll show you what a factorial is in just a sec, plus 1 divided by 2 factorial, plus 1 divided by 3 factorial, plus 1 divided by 4 factorial, plus 1 divided by 5 factorial. The farther you go, right, if you go up to 1, like if you do all of these, these values up to 1 divided by a million factorial, the farther you go, the closer and closer you get to E, okay? So what a factorial is, and we're going to touch on this again in later sections, uh, 1 factorial just means 1. 2 factorial means 2 times 1. You multiply the numbers down until you get to 1. So 2 times 1, you're multiplying all of the whole numbers down from the number you start at down to 1. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 120. Factorials are going to end up being really important when we talk about probability. But for right now, you don't need to know that. And again, this is another way to approximate E. You're not going to have to approximate E. So if you totally just skipped the last couple minutes of this video and said, hey, I don't care, that's a choice, and I'm okay with it. All right, moving on. So the natural exponential function, okay, so remember, E is not 3, right? So E 
is approximately 2.718, and then it keeps going, right? Um, but in your brain, right, in your brain, it's 3-ish, just like pi is 3-ish. It's not 3, and you should never replace an e with a 3. But if you're trying to picture what e squared looks like, well, e squared's kind of close to 9, right? It's not 9. You should never write that e squared is 9. But if you were trying to picture where something is, it's close to 9. So this looks just like every exponential function you've seen uh, before, right? This looks a lot like 3 to the x, right? Um, so we've seen before that the domain of exponential functions, regardless of what the base is, is negative infinity to infinity. And then the range has that asymptote that we talked about in previous videos at zero, so it's zero to infinity, right? Um, so in your brain, if you had to figure out where e squared is, and you can kind of see this, right? This is e squared. Well, that's 9-ish. That's so e squared is close to 3 squared. It's not 3 squared, but it's close to 3 squared, and you can see that that is, in fact, very close to 9, right? So just a little bit of a, a way to help with this, right? Um, now, you are asked here as a checkpoint, what is the y-intercept of e to the x? Well, the y-intercept of any exponential is 1, right? Like any, any, any like y equals b to the x. Uh, and you can see that, right? So the y-intercept is when x is 0. So uh, the y-intercept would be e to the 0, which is 1. So the y-intercept is at 1, and you can see that right here. This is the point 0, comma 1, okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and use... Uh, the e to the x button to evaluate this to the nearest thousand. Nobody expects you to do this by hand, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do e to the second and get an approximate value, right? I'm going to do e to the one half and get an approximate value. And I'm going to do e to the negative one and get an approximate value, but I didn't give myself enough space. So let's go ahead and type these in, right? So e, I'm going to do the second. There's two ways to do this. You can either do the e button above the division symbol or you can just know that you're going to put a power anyway. So you can do second e to the x, which is second natural log. And then I can just put the 2 in, right? So let's enter. And notice, I'm expecting this to be close to 9 because, remember, e is close to 3. And sure enough, close to 9, right? So it's not exactly 9, but if you were trying to estimate this, uh, if you're trying to figure out where something lives on a graph, you could say, hey, that's kind of close to 3 squared. Uh, I'm going to be lazy and just hit second enter, right? And I'm going to go ahead and put a 1 half. Right? Uh, so I'm going to get this approximately. Oh, I did not give myself enough space. Let's just ignore that. Uh, three. Oh, hey, that's, that's a really big number because I did something dumb. So your brain should be like, hey, wait a second. That's a big number. And I did, so you can see I accidentally put a 21. So we'll do second, enter. I should have spotted that quickly because the square root of three should not be that big of a number. Right? So hopefully your brain catches something when you do something dumb like that because uh, typos happen. Right? So if we go ahead and fix this, this is a 1. 0.64, and you could either do 8 or 9, right? Uh, sorry, it was a 9, I just wrote a 7. Because uh, in general, they say nearest thousand, so they want you to round. This would be rounding, right? This is truncate. Uh, sorry, this is truncating. This is rounding, right? Truncate and round. So either of those is fine. I would take rounding or truncating. Uh, sometimes they will expressly say rounding. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit second enter one more time. And I'm going to change this to a negative 1 and delete that extra parenthesis, and there we have it. So I get a 0.367. Again, that would be truncating. Uh, if I round it, it's going to be an 8, right? So I would take either of those answers. All right. So you're going to go ahead and give that a try, right? Uh, so you can do the same thing, right? You're going to do e to the third. You're going to do e to the negative second. And you're going to do e to the one third, right? And you're just approximating those values. So um, I can hit second enter. Right? If I want to be really lazy, I can do them in the easiest order, which would mean do the negative second first here because I already had a negative 1. So this is a 0.135. Right? That's this one. Second enter. I'm going to go ahead and do the 3 next. Right? And again, I'm not shocked with that number. Right? Uh, 3 cubed would be 27. It should be smaller than 27, but not a ton smaller. So it just gives you an idea when you're trying to kind of approximate where the values are, right? Um, and then second, enter, and then one third. All right, and there we have it, right? So 1.395 or 6, depending on if you round or truncate. All right. So the natural log, uh, log function, so we just call it natural log, is technically y equals log base e of x, but literally no one ever writes that. We write y equals natural log of x. Um, it is the inverse 
of e to the x. And you can see in red, here's the graph of e to the x, and here's the, uh, the graph of y equals natural log of x. This is the log you're going to end up using more than all other logs moving forward. Maybe not in this class, but as you move forward in mathematics, you're going to use natural log a lot. So you'll notice that as with all inverses, you could reflect them over the line y equals x, which is why this is drawn here. So uh, in this checkpoint, they specifically want you to state the domain and range of e to the x and also of y equals natural log, and we've already done that. Uh, but we'll do it again real quick. So in e to the x, you can input all real numbers, but your output has that vertical or that horizontal asymptote rather at zero, right? The red function is always going to stay above that zero, which means that y equals natural log of x is going to have the opposite domain and range, right? They're going to flip. Um, and you can see that, right? You can see that this blue line is, is here and there's a vertical line that that's not crossing, right? And the range is negative infinity to infinity. And you can see that because this goes down forever and this goes up forever. All right. So let's go ahead and use the natural log button in our calculator to evaluate a few more things. So natural log of 2, natural log of 1 half, and natural log of negative 1. And I could say something now, but I'm not going to say it yet. So we'll, we'll just wait till I get to uh, some of you might have already spotted a problem. So let's go ahead and, uh, and do the first one. So we get 0.693. It's the first one, right? Uh, second, enter. 0.5 or 1 half, I was just lazy, okay, and I get a 0.916. Now, when I do the, the last one, an interesting thing is going to happen. Natural log of negative 1, right, and it's going to give me a problem. So it says non-real answer. So this is not possible. Because you can only put positives inside logs. Meaning, x equals negative 1 is not in the domain. I can't input x equals negative 1. I can't do that. So there's no answer there, right? There's no value. Now you can see that your calculator gave you that by giving you an error with a non-real answer, but, but also you still need to be able to figure out, uh, you know, what that means if it says that. So let's go ahead and try a P2, right? So I'm going to go ahead and quit because I don't care what that says. Okay. So, and actually, uh, here you might find that pressing second enter takes as much time as it does to just press the natural log button, um, because, uh, again, it's not that awful to just press the natural log button here. So, uh, so natural log of 4 is a 1.386, approximately, right? Uh, natural log of 0 is going to give me a problem, right? Uh, this is not possible. because x equals 0 is not in the domain of this function, right? I can't do that, so there's, there's no answer there. It's not possible. Uh, and then I quit that, and let's do the last one, which is natural log of 3 fifths. Right, and I'm going to get that this is a negative 0 0.510 or 1, depending on if you round your truncate. All right, cool. All right, so change of base formula. So this formula allows you to change any logarithm of any base into a different logarithm of a base of your choosing. In, in general, you're going to be choosing either log, L-O-G, which is base 10, or natural log, L-N, uh, moving forward. To be honest, when you get to calculus, you're only going to choose natural log, so there's not really a whole lot of reason to choose other things. So if you have the log base B of X, right, so this was the old base, you can change it to the log base A, where A is the base you choose of X, right, the thing inside the top one, over log base A of the original base. So you can change, uh, so for instance, if I had log base 2 of 3, I could change this into the natural log of 3 divided by the natural log of 2, or the log base 10 of 3 over the log base 10 of 2, or inexplicably, the log base 57 of 3 over the log base 57 of 2. It wouldn't matter, right, that's a 7. Uh, I could pick anything. These are the ones that would make sense because they could both fit in your calculator, but I could pick whatever I want. And, and honestly, we're almost always going to pick natural log. All right. So E3, change the given logarithm into an expression with only natural logs. Then use your calculator to find an approximate value to the thousandth place per usual. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So change a base formula says that I can make this the natural log of 83 divided by the natural log of 15. 
So that's exactly what I'm going to type in my calculator. And I don't know why I inexplicably make my natural logs in cursive, but that's what I do. I don't have a good reason. Uh, I don't write in cursive really ever, but for some reason my entire life I write natural log in cursive. I've got nothing. It's weird. Okay. So natural log of 83, close the parentheses, divided by the natural log of 15. And I hit enter, right? And we'll just go ahead and take a quick uh, screenshot of that and drag it over so we can see what it would look like in the calculator anyway, right? And so then my approximate value is going to be 1.631 or 2, depending on if you round or truncate. And that's it. Um, okay, so uh, log base 7 of 205, right, is going to be the natural log of 205 divided by the natural log of 7. Again, I have no idea why I make them cursive. I've got nothing. So uh, let's go ahead and change this up for a sec. Uh, natural log of 205 divided by natural log of 7. And there we have it. So we're going to get that this is approximately. So it's still equal at this point, but now it's approximate uh, 2.73. Five, and that's the same whether I round or truncate. All right. Uh, so real quick, but Hogan, my calculator is fancy, and I don't need to change the base to enter things. So maybe you don't, right? Maybe if you go to, I think it might be under math. We'll find out. Yeah, maybe if you go to math and you find nine, you say, wait a second, math nine, right? And then there's a way to enter a, a base with a log. So let's. Now, if I did that, I'd still have to know the algorithm for what order I have to put them in. And maybe if your calculator is in math print, which I never use because I hate math print, but let's just see what happens. If your calculator is in math print, maybe when you do that, second enter, uh, not what I meant. Hang on, math. Uh, we figured out it was alpha A. Now, oh, hey, isn't that convenient? That looks literally just like, uh, like what we're supposed to do. And you're like, hey, Hogan, but my calculator's fancy. I can do this if I, like, I can enter whatever I want, right? Isn't that nice, right? So I get that if your calculator is fancy and you're able to go to math and then you can pick A, which is log base, right? I get that that would be handy for you, right? I also get that we could probably figure out, even if I'm in the other mode, right, based on an answer that we know, we could troubleshoot what happens if I'm in the other mode. Uh, we could go to classic for a sec. And then when I quit out of this, uh, if I go to math and alpha A, right, I can troubleshoot. I know that if I do, let's say, the log base 10 of 100, the answer should be 2 because 10 to the second is 100, right? So I know that should be uh, 10 to the second is 100. So I could troubleshoot and see what happens if I put a number in. If I put log base 10 of 100, is this the right order to get the right answer out? If I get a 2, I did it right. I didn't. I got a 0.5, which means that I did it wrong, right? So uh, so that must mean it's the reverse order, right? So if I hit second, uh, so this is not the right answer. So I hit second enter. If I try uh, 100 comma 10, if I get the right answer, then that's the order. So if it looks like this, right, if it looks like this, based on an easy example, I was able to figure out that the order I would put them in, right, the order I would put them in would be um, the thing that's inside the log, Right, so the thing that's inside the log. So if you see this, right, let's say you want to put in log base B of A, this would be A and this would be B, right? So like this is the base. Now that's great, right? So you're probably saying, Hogan, why would I bother to do any of this? That's a great question. In calculus, in calculus, you're going to have to be able to rewrite the log base 2 of X as the natural log of X over the natural log of 2 because some of the operations that you're required to do, specifically the two operations that are really important in calculus, which are called differentiation and integration, rely only on natural logs. You have to be able to do, you can't do it to other logs. You can't do it to log base three. You can't do it to log base 50. You can't do it to log base 10. The only logarithm that you can integrate and differentiate, which are going to be two very important skills in calculus, are natural logs. So in calculus, you're gonna have to be able to look at this and know that it's this, which you're actually going to rewrite as a number, because this is a number, times a natural log of x. Like this is a number, and this is x stuff. So in calculus, you're going to have to be able to make that leap, and that's not something a calculator can do for you. So while it's fine with me, if you want to use this stuff to, to plug in and not use change of base, you absolutely have to know change of base. Moving forward, it's going to be a more important skill than knowing what the natural log of 8 is. Okay? 
and that's my spiel. This is the end of this video.